How's it going? I'm having a good day. Hit the gym. Got some good lunch. I'm feeling energized, ready to knock out this tutorial video. And I'm going to show you in five steps how you can take the samples you made in our last tutorial and put them into a playable contact instrument, save them, and then you can use it for the rest of your working career or just for fun. You can always have those samples available whenever you want, wherever you want, on whatever computer you want. You can share them with your friends. You can post them online for sale. Who knows? Whatever you want to do with them, it's great. So the first step we got to do is load our samples in the mapping editor. So open up contact uh, and this disc image up here. If any of you remember floppy disks, you got to hit that and go new instrument. If your new instrument is still default, it should do this with a blank default instrument. We need group editor. Um, in here, you should have one empty group. You can call it whatever you want. I'm going to call it metal sales. Uh, and then mapping editor, this is where we'll spend most of our time today. Go ahead and open the folder with your samples on it. And here are mine. And you get the idea. So for every prefix, I'm going to work with that group and kind of decide where I want to put them because there are a couple options you got when you drop them in how you want the keyboard to respond. Uh, I'm going to start with the deep hits, put them on C0 maybe. Hang on. Let's see. I think that's C0. Yep. Bottom C on the keyboard. Here we go. I'm going to put them in so it's spaced one sample per key. You'll notice as you go higher up, it'll spread that sample across more keys. And we're going to use this later. Uh, but right now I just want them one per key. You could also put them directly on the actual physical or visual key on there and it puts all those samples on one note and it sets them to velocity. But in this case, we just want one sample per key. So now I've got, oops, put it on C1. Make sure you're on C0. So you can see those are now all mapped on individual keys. Uh, the next set of sounds, I know this is a drone and what I like to do with drones is spread them across a couple keys so you have a couple pitches. You could even use the same sound twice, kind of layer them in there. So what I'm going to do, since this is only three samples, I'm going to assign this to have, uh, let's just stick with it's two keys per sample. So now when I put push A0, it'll hit that roll. And if I hit B flat zero, it'll hit the roll, but it'll be up a half step. It actually pitch bends it automatically, which is kind of helpful for making it more usable later. Um, now I've got these scary rolls. I'm going to do the same. We'll do two keys. Per sample, so now I only got E flat one and uh, E one are the same sample but pitched a half step apart. Next, I got my scrapes. I think I'll just do one key on each of these and tapping. I know from all the tapping instruments I've made it's really helpful to have lots of variety of these. So what I'm going to do is make it two keys per sample. So I do have that option. Oops, that's the scary rolls. So you'll hear here, right here, same hit, half step apart can be really helpful for you programming later to make it feel a little more natural instead of the same one all the time. So experiment with how many keys you want to spread apart your sample because especially if it's a percussive thing, you might want lots of different pitch options. You could even have way less samples than I have today and spread them out like half an octave or like three quarters of an octave for each sample and you got a lot of options there. Um, and last, I have these tapping themes and it looks like I got quite a bit of room yet. So I'm going to do 
two spaces of these. Yeah, so two keys of these. Step two, you need to set a balanced volume of all your samples. So you, you kind of need to fine tune every one of them in the way you do that. When you select a sample in the mapping editor, this whole top bar here, it's about four pixels wide. It's super tiny. It's probably more than four, but it sure feels like four when you're looking for the fine tune buttons. To be honest, the first time I looked for the volume control, I couldn't find it because I was looking all over and in every single corner of this thing. And it was right above here the whole time. So your volume control is, is right above the actual mapping editor right here. So if I hit that, you just want it to be a bit under zero. So definitely don't need it clipping anything, but you also don't want it so loud when you play more than one, they'll pile up and, and clip your, uh, your uh, output. And you can hear already how much softer this next one is. You need to go through every single sample and balance the volume so when you play it, nothing sticks out too much and you're comfortable uh, later when you're trying to mix this in with a track. You don't want to deal with volume issues. Now we're on to step three where we add a velocity modulation to the playback. So when you send in signal to contact, you see this little red line that's popping up there? If I hit harder on the key, it's gonna go higher up on the velocity range. And right now, there's nothing telling contact to do anything different with that sample. But what you can do is add a velocity modulation. So while you're in the mapping editor, you go to mod, add modular, external sources, and go down to velocity. And once you're in velocity, you can click this little, like, little dotted line thing, and it drops down this view you can start drawing the velocity. So what this does is when you play a soft note, what you're seeing actually is the volume that that sample plays at. So the softer you play, the less volume it is. So right now it's set to be as loud as it can be all the time. But if you bring this down a little, it's going to play that a little bit softer. And as you get higher, it'll be louder. And what I've found that works really great is to have a little bit of a curve there and it gets up to the loudest it can be. And that's helped me program a little bit more uh, musically, I guess, because if you keep hitting the same sample, the same volume over and over, it just, it never sounds normal. So that's the first uh, major thing to make sure you have in a, in a little simple instrument in contact like this, the velocity modulation. Step four, we need to add another modulation. And this one is, uh, you, you'll add this right under where you did the velocity, under mod. And you go to envelopes and do A, H, D, S, R. So way at the bottom here is the A, H, D, S, R window. Uh, the most important part of this and why we're adding it is so we have a release time to our samples. Before, when you let go of the sample, it just disappears immediately. And maybe that's what you want with your sample, but for me right now, I want it to decay a little bit. So I'm going to leave the release time at like 1K, and that will feel a little more natural when I'm programming stuff. Step five, we need to save this instrument. So to do that, it's pretty easy, but there's one thing you should know on the settings when you save it. So go to Save Edited Instrument As, and then for now let's just make a folder on the desktop, we'll call it Metal Sales. And we can save this as Metal Sales. I'll just say Tutorial, and then right here on the bottom, we want to save the patch and samples, and we want to compress the samples because it'll take up less memory when you're loading up this instrument later, and Contact's going to uncompress them when it prints them out anyway. So save it, 
uh, with those two settings. So we can actually uh, load this up right away. Uh, open with contact five, and there we go. Everything's ready. Every setting we had is saved. The uh, files are not taking as much space because they've been compressed. And you're ready to rock that sample instrument out for years to come. <laughs>